actually it started five years ago. Uh, first of all, I was looking for organic food in the market and I realized that uh, it's a little bit expensive and you don't know where it comes from exactly. So I started to think about why shouldn't I try it to grow in my own garden. Uh, it was my first journey started in this country. Uh, so it was hard to understand the climate here, you know, because you are uh, in this climate, we're going from summer to winter, uh, but rest of the world is having spring and summer. It was just my first couple of years where I was trying to understand the climate, what can I grow here, deciding on those. I just started with just a few pots, you know, and then it's increased and increased uh, by the time being. Uh, first of all, I started with some tomatoes and peppers, just like everyone else doing. I have two kids and I want them also to include, I mean, to come with me to the garden and see how the food is growing. Just in front of them, I want them to see and realize. Uh, so uh, we started like that and I, also the first reason I started was to giving them the healthiest and the freshest food also to us. We are family of four, so that's how my journey started actually. The most important thing is the soil, understanding the soil. It all starts with the high quality soil. So if you understand the dynamics of a soil, because it's a living organism, not, not just a dirt, so there is a life in it. So if you keep that life uh, healthy, your plants is going to be healthy, your crops is going to be healthy also. So my first point, starting point, was uh, working about my soil. How, of course, we're doing composting, uh, you know about yeah. it. All, all our kitchen scra scraps go through our bokashi bins and then we do traditional hot composting outside the garden. So we use our own scraps okay. for our soil. All the kitchen okay. scraps, okay. I can say, because okay. with bokashi bin, you can even use dairy, meat, fish uh, okay. scraps also, not only the veggie plant-based material. Uh, bokashi composting is, you ferment your scraps at okay. first, uh, like two weeks of period and then you either bury them in your garden or you can combine them with brown materials because it's green materials that you call them like brown materials what do we call like cardboards dry leaves things like that brown so you combine them and after a month or so uh, you get a soil like uh, compost which is very rich and then you add it to your soil and to your plants and they get all the nutrients from that. We also do uh, vermicomposting. Vermicomposting is the you put your kitchen scraps, scraps in a warm hotel. Uh, these are composting worms, special worms that eat them and uh, make a vermicompost. It's very rich, also the most uh, important menu, let's, let's say, in the world. Mm. So we also use them in our garden. Let's talk about the pests. As I said, if you have a healthy soil, your plant is going to be healthy. Okay. Pests are attracted to the uh, weak plants. If you have a plants like this, I mean like uh, healthy looking, they don't uh, want to come to that plant because they want to destroy it as soon as possible. Other than that, we are using companion planting. Uh, companion planting is uh, matching uh, some of the crops together that work together better. Uh, like, let's say, uh, I always add flowers and herbs next to my main crops. For example, I want to grow tomatoes in my garden, in my bed. I always add basil and marigold. Because each plant has different uh, smell, pest doesn't like to visit there. If you make a garden full of just tomatoes, it's just a place to party for the pest. <laughs> Also in organic gardening, uh, prevention is the most important thing. So we are sometimes using mesh covers uh, when we transplant our seedlings to our garden at the beginning of the season. We try to protect them uh, from the pests. Or we use organza bags like this uh, to pr protect them from the fruit flies. They don't come and uh, lay their eggs inside. So we basically do the companion planting, mixing the plants and try to prevent them, to prevent the pests come there and put their eggs there. Most of the time I say my own seeds because most of these plants are heirloom varieties. You can save seeds year after year. So I 
try to make a sustainable garden also because you know gardening sometimes can be uh, should be budget friendly mm. so to satisfy that uh, I'm trying to save my own seeds and this has another advantage mm. you can uh, adjust these gen genetics year after year to this climate because this is grown last year now this year I'm gonna take the fruit of it mm. and take the seed and next year I will grow again for example it is getting used to this hot weather and climate and making more yields year after year here we have herbs and flowers that is what I'm trying to tell you flowers herbs and main crops I always try to achieve this in all of my beds in this bed we are having passion fruits strawberries peas we have cucumbers here lavender here uh, so lavender is again protecting my strawberries for the pests now we are in the transition period of the season we are going through the summer as you know uh, so the weather is getting hot and hot so I cleaned up some of my plants to make them pollinated uh, our garden should be attractive to pollinators and beneficial insects that's why I am trying to put flowers in between my main crops mm -hmm. so the beneficials come visit those flowers and then visit your vegetable crops and pollinate them and make the fruit form uh, here for example I also started beekeeping this year so I have my bees honey bees okay. uh, that's why I'm growing some sunflowers some alistum here some salvia they come and collect the pollen and nectar from these flowers uh, we have different varieties of basil here. Bees love basil flowers. Basil also is a good crop to protect the vegetables. It, it has a strong sm smell, so uh, it can protect your veggies. Another pepper plant there coming uh, with a lot of fruit. Here we have radish. What I also do is, for example, I'm growing pepper plant in this pot. I always put like reddish and onion, spring onion in that same pot. This is for the prevention of the pets. This is for making the use of the garden because this is a small garden. We don't have a huge place to grow lots of food. Uh, so making use of the space is important. That's why I'm using arches like that. I'm trying to grow vertically everything. Okay. Try to gain uh, some space. That's why I'm using my fans during the summer. I grow all my melons on this fence that they climb up uh, and uh, we can grow lots of food just in that small row let's say we have all flowers here borage calendula a basil uh, these are also used to make tea for example this is another hollyhock plant that is full with pollen for my bees on the other hand you can collect all these flowers dry them and make tea so I'm trying to uh, attract the beneficials, but on the other hand, I want to harvest flowers also and make tea from them, for example. Okay. That's another plant there, the blue, blue flowers, uh, blue pea flower that you can collect and make tea again. We have indoor hydroponics that we grow our uh, greens like lettuce, uh, arugula, things like that during the summer also. During the season, we are trying to use this space also and make use of it and grow some. We grow all our uh, lettuce here. Now it's the, it, the weather is hot, so we have just some arugula and mizuna. The, this is another rare variety. Some kale, some small tomato varieties here. Uh, it's not organic, I know, but uh, sometimes if you don't grow this here, you go to the market and buy hydroponically grown lettuce, let's say. <laughs> so I'm trying to uh, buy as least as possible from the market and try to grow my own food as, as, as much as I can. Most of the crops you can grow in winter, uh, okay. you can grow I mean, almost everything. Only the plants, the trees like raspberry, blueberry, they need chilling hours. We don't have prostate here in Dubai. Mm -hmm. uh, so you cannot, uh, it's, it's not, I mean, possible to give that environment to those plants. Other than that, in winter, you can grow almost everything. But in summer, mm -hmm. it's a little bit tricky. We can grow melons, watermelons, okra, sweet potato, basil, amaranth, purslane, 
Molokia. I mean, I can count lots of things. You can still fill your garden with these heat loving ones. Of course, uh, we need to cover a shade cloth during the summer here. From May to October, we are using uh, green shade cloths to make the intense uh, sun rays, I mean, sun x rays, to decrease the sun exposure to our plants. But uh, some of the plants can still be grown even they are not covered. Some trees also handle the heat also, like pomegranate, figs, uh, lemon trees. It's, these are easy to grow in this climate.